you guys know how I feel in this name. I do think it's an unusually good setup for a, a short here. Maybe it bounces a little bit into next week. It sold off about 10%, um, you know, since last Friday here. That's a big move in a short period of time. But I just want to look at this chart. Okay, guy, when you look at that $200 resistance level, it never got to its 200-day uh, moving average. It today broke that uptrend that had been in place from the January lows here. So when I look at this chart, I say to myself, okay, it's going to have to retake in a meaningful manner, okay, that uptrend or that past support becomes resistance. Okay, that's the start of this thing. They report on April 19th after the market closed, the implied move in the options market is about 7.5% in either direction. Now, that's not particularly useful on April 6th here. We have 13 days, but it's just kind of giving you a sense of what option, uh, options market makers are pricing right here for the one-day move. So I don't like the technical setup. Fundamentals here. Okay, they just missed the delivery estimate. Their own estimate, the consensus, we know that there's been numbers of price cuts here. We know that margins are gonna be under pressure. I think there's a really good chance that um, what they basically guide to is not gonna be particularly great. Um, so we also have that. All right, so I bought and I got emotional, okay? Mm. I kind of bought the TSLQ. I doubled my position Friday afternoon into the close there. I had a good trade this week. I took a bunch of the TSLQ, the ETF. That's the inverse of the Tesla stock, okay? As Tesla goes lower, TSLQ goes higher. Correct, that's exactly what happened here. Yeah. So you look at that chart here. And if I, I I just like looking at that chart. This this ETF was introduced when the uh, it was about 50 bucks, okay, last summer here. And I look at this thing and that looks like a great double bottom and I wanna play for a move back above 50. So how am I gonna do that between now and April expiration, catching the earnings announcement? I wanna use a call spread. I wanna define my risk here. So today when the ETF TSLQ was trading 47.40, I could buy the April 50, 55 call spread, paying about a dollar for that. It's actually cheaper than that right now it's probably like 90 cents or mm -hmm. so buying to open one of the april 50 calls for a dollar 50 selling to open one of the april 55 calls at about 50 cents again that one dollar is the max i can lose here profits up to four dollars between 51 and 55 and the max gain of four above 55 losses up to one between 50 and 51 with a max loss of one below 50. Here's the risk reward. This is what I really like about this trade. I'm risking a little more than 2% of the ETF price here. I have a break even up about 7%. I have a max potential gain of a little more than 8% if the ETF is up 14% in two weeks. Again, catching the earnings, I'll look to cut my losses if this thing is worth about 50 cents or less. We don't like to see long premium directional trades go to zero. And how do you do that? You have a mental stop, you cut your losses, and so I just want to make a point here. So let's just say you traded a 10 lot, okay, of this $5 wide call spread. You paid one for it. You'd be risking $1,000 to make up to 4000 if it's 55 or higher. I just really like the risk reward. Now you may say 14%, you know, max gain potential here. That's a lot. Well, I'd tell you that the one day implied move for mm -hmm. earnings is about, seven and a half percent so i like the risk reward here i've swapped out of the etf so i don't have that risk and i'm defining my risk guy what do you think so here you go so i look at this and you put the numbers out and they're all correct here's how my mind looks at it this is basically risk one to make four but since you brought up the fact that you'd probably be stopping out at 50 cents you're actually eight to one so you're risking effectively one to make eight if you really come down to brass tacks and allow that stop to kick in the risk reward sets up well. Your timing is right in terms of earnings. I think you're getting paid enough to sell that $55 call. That 50 cents is getting, you're getting basically rewarded enough to make that sell. If it was less than 25 cents, I'd say there's no reason to do it. So this makes a lot of sense yeah. to me. And listen, if you think about it, we thought Tesla could get down to 165 recently. Yeah, it pull got that chart up. 163.96. Pull, pull up the Tesla chart. You made a great call on that. It so, bounced, so, but then yeah. there's the chart. The subsequent bounce, though, did not get us back to levels we saw earlier this year. Yeah. We we stopped short of that. So lower highs is what lower you're highs. Yeah. Now we're through that uptrend line. So 165 seems to be in play, which probably gets you through. I mean, it probably gets you right to that. Guy, I can't do the math, you see but it the probably gap? gets you. No, look yeah. at that gap at 150. That and was earnings. That was earnings. Okay, so, so again, exactly so right. I just want to make one really important point here about this. So when, when the stock was like 140 into earnings last quarter, mm -hmm. it had sold off, okay, down to $100. Okay, just to be really clear, okay, this stock was 700 and sold off to $100, okay? They could have said anything and the stock was likely to rally. The fact that it's now making 
lower highs, I think, is important. And the other point, so I think if they disappoint, it's going to round trip to 150. And so you, you may ask yourself, why are you then capping your gains in a call spread? Okay, I will work into this position, okay? And there will be some that will be outright long that won't be capped. And I'm probably a little early here. Let's see if this can get above that uptrend. And if it does, I'd love for that and then for it to fail. So again, you don't want to be setting up for an earnings trade too early. You know what I mean? You may mm -hmm. find yourself the day before earnings willing to take the same amount of risk OK, but then because you're already in the position, you might have the wrong strikes as it trades, as it gets into options. So this is something I'm doing small right here. And most importantly, I swapped out of the TSLQ and now I have this exposure, but I'm giving myself some optionality to play this into the print. Let's just look at a longer term chart because I think you said 700. I think the all time high risk split adjusted is north of 400 or oh, so. Did so I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's just if we could pull yeah. up a chart. Oh, it was 400. You're right. Just Sorry to about see. That. No, that's fine. 400 but, to 100 is what, what happened. But yeah. With that said, you're still talking about. Listen, despite the fact the stock has rallied of a hundred percent, yeah, it's still down fifty over fifty yeah. percent at these levels from its all time high. And at a certain point, it was down seventy five percent. So although this bounce looks significant, which it is, the stock's still been in a pretty significant downtrend now for quite some yeah, time. Yeah, and I, listen, and I just want to make the point. I think all of you people, you know how I feel about the company. You know how I feel about their guidance and the way they give it. Um, you know how I feel about the competition you know how i feel about the concentration risk that they have um in china here so like to me i don't know what chart of that is but give us a five-year guys just hit the five-year thing down there um and so like i just i just think that this is the quarter where the rubber is going to hit the road here and i also want to make a really important point this stock, whether you like the fact that it's up 100% from those January lows, from a technical basis, it's broken, okay? And when you have a broken chart guy, like a lot of funky stuff can happen here. So to me, I would not be surprised if we go back and fill in that gap towards 150, the next stop is 100 to the downside here. And especially if we go into a recession here, and abroad and then you have these competition issues in places like china and then you have some sort of geopolitical dust up in china there's no reason why this stock should not go back and retest those levels and again I, you know this is not me being a perma bear on the name it just seems like low-hanging fruit as far as if you're in the geopolitical messy camp and the recession camp for the balance this year